welcome back to 25 Drive Live. My name is Alex Montanez and I am your host and today we have a very special guest. This is Michael Fenton and he is the general manager of Perry's Egyptian Theater. So uh, we're just going to dive right into this and find out everything that's going on at the theater, what's happening, uh, what's coming up. There's a lot of things going on and we're going to go back uh, through memory lane and go back through the history of uh, Perry's Egyptian Theater and see what we can find out. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Alex. I'm glad to be here. So I'm actually from the Ogden area. I grew up going to downtown Ogden quite a bit and experienced the Egyptian Theater when it was not in such good condition in the 1970s and 80s. And I just remember back then, even in its poorest condition, I thought, boy, that place is magical. And I'm grateful for the opportunity now to to be a part of, of the the experience and everything that's going on in the theater and in, in downtown Ogden. And that's awesome. Now, I've worked with uh, Mike, alongside Mike, um, for, for years when we were out in Layton as well. He was out there during the time I was, and uh, you were out there with um, which hotel? Hampton Inn and Holiday Express in Layton, as well as the Davis Conference Center. Okay, so you did a lot of promotions and marketing and all that kind of stuff for all, the, all those entities out, out, out there. Absolutely. Um, and so what brought you into Ogden? How did you, how did you get this transition? It was a great opportunity. Um, even before I was working in Layton, uh, my first job back after uh, going to UNLV was working at the, Davis, at the Ogden Apples Conference Center in Perry's Egyptian Theater. And I did that, fell in love with the theater, loved what they did. And so when this opportunity came up, I was more, I was very excited to come uh, and be a part of it. All right. So um, when the opportunity arose, you know, what was the uh, what was the carrot they dangled in front of you that said you need to come here? Well, it's obvious that uh, Ogden has a lot going for it, especially down in the Twenty Fifth Street area. But but there's a there's uh, an amazing energy that takes place at that Egyptian theater. You know, we've got the Sundance Film Festival in January. But we also have a, an amazing amount of, of clientele that regularly use that theater. And I've, I've been, even as after leaving the conference center the first time, I was volunteering as an usher at the theater. And I knew what, uh, the exciting stuff that they were doing and I wanted to be a part of it again when the opportunity arose. All right. So when you, uh, when you actually made the transition over to Perry's Egyptian Theater, um, what were some of the first things that were on the docket that you wanted to do, you know, the, based on your skill set? What, what were you bringing to the facility? Well, so the theater, the theater and the conference center, and, and they both uh, work under one management, um, has, has been doing really well at generating business. And, uh, you know, we have one of the premier conferences for F-16. In fact, the F-16 conference is in Ogden. And it's amazing how many people do not realize the things that are going on in there. So for me, uh, being a marketing uh, you know, uh, experience in the, in the marketing, uh, it was about being the cheerleader and getting people to understand and know what's going on in the conference center. So uh, where, where they've had successes in the past, they weren't good about touting their own horn. That's where I came in, and, and I've made it very, very obvious to the public. So uh, where, where some things have, where I wanted to make some changes and do some things, um, I'm very proactive. I'm, I've, I've acquired the funds. Uh, to replace the carpet in the theater and keep that place vibrant, and it's been things that they've they've been wanting to do, but only recently now we're able to do and, and make that place uh, looking beautiful and, and going forward. You know, and I have to tell you guys, it is one of the most beautiful theaters because I've been you know I've been down to Salt Lake and the Capitol Theater. It's a beautiful theater as well. I've been even up to Logan, and I can't remember. I think the one up in Logan's called Capitol Theater too. Uh, I think you're. I think you. I think you're thinking of the Eccles Theater. The Eccles Theater, and that's on Main Street. Yeah. Okay. So the Eccles Theater, but the Egyptian Theater is something really special. I mean, when you go in there, there's just a, they're really cool vibe, um, and, and it is beautiful. Now they did a ma major renovation uh, for Perry's Egyptian Theater, and how long ago was that? I can't remember. Well, that's the fun thing, and that's why I'm glad you asked me to come today, is because that took place in 1997, which means in less than a year, in a few months, we're going to be celebrating our 20-year anniversary. Wow. Okay, that's great. So, let's talk about the 20-year anniversary celebration. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, fill us in. Tell, you know, tell all of our guests, um, you know, what, uh, all of our viewers, you know, what's happening and, and uh, you know, and everything that's going into it. Well, so... Like like I said, the 20 year anniversary is coming up. Now it's interesting because I was doing the time I was doing the history just recently, and 
the Egyptian theater and the conference center uh, was restored in 1997, which was five years before Historic 25th Street Association became a uh, I came on board. Um, a lot of good things have happened on 25th Street, but it was really the Egyptian theater and getting people to come back to Ogden, uh, which was was started with with Perry's Egyptian Theater being restored. And then you had the, the 25th Street Association and the 25th Street, uh, which revitalized, and then the Junction, and things have just kept growing now in those in those 20 years. And we are excited because we're looking now at, at the 20 year anniversary, and we've got some great things that we have in the planning stages and not everything that, that I can share at this time. I'd love to come back in six months when, when we're getting close to, to the date, but I can tell you that uh, there's been a lot of talk about getting some live theater into the conference center or into the theater, uh, musicals and some other things. And we're working on, on some great partnerships with Weber State and some other uh, community partners to make some great things happen in the near future. Well, I'll tell you what, I went to, um, uh, Blues Brothers, uh, what was it called? The Blues Brothers Review. 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 Yeah. Yep. Review. And um, they had they had a good sized band. And they had uh, uh, two guys that were Jake and Elwood. Uh, and you know what? That was one of the best concerts. But what what really surprised me about that concert was the acoustics. Yeah. Because when I went in there, I was thinking, okay, this is going to be a fun show. I'm a big Blues Brothers fan, you know. And um, but but what what really caught me was the acoustics that. Way back when, when they constructed this building, this beautiful building, um, with the with the arch ceiling and everything like that, um, they were thinking about the acoustics. They were thinking about the sound and everything that goes into it. Oh, absolutely. In fact, the two brothers, the two Perry brothers that built the thing uh, and really invested in it, and they sent the architectures back to New York and into uh, Egypt. It's proper to, to look at the architecture and everything. And they really spent a lot of money on just making sure that when they built this place, it wasn't just a movie theater, it was a movie palace. And in fact, I have to, I have to boast, we're the last movie palace in, uh, in Utah. You know, there used to be at one time dozen, a dozen or so, and we are the last remaining movie palace in existence in the state of Utah. See, now that's the first time I've ever heard of that, uh, that term of movie palace. Yeah. So give me an idea of what a movie palace is. Well, so back in the day, you didn't just go to a movie and you didn't just watch it. Uh, you didn't just watch a film, maybe get some advertisements at the beginning. It was a whole experience. And so from the minute you walked inside the door, it was supposed to take you to another place. And because the, the theater was built in 1924, that was the time when uh, the discover of, discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. And so there was a lot of buzz about Egypt at that time. And so the Piris went with the theme of, of, of uh, the Egyptian. And uh, so they spent a ton of money and... And I know they, they really wanted to do it up because this was the, this that site where the theater is is where their pioneer ancestors settled initially in Ogden, and so if for them it was an opportunity to really, uh, you know, Im immortalize their 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 heritage. Okay. Well, you know, you seem really enthusiastic about this. Uh, and how long have you been in the job so far? Uh, you know, I'm twelve months. Twelve months. So yeah. one one year, you're still very enthusiastic. Now, everything that I know about this guy from years ago, when we were in Leighton, and that was over six years ago, mm -hmm. um, is he's always had this drive, um, you know, and he's always been very enthusiastic, very, uh, you know, I don't know, just just forward thinking. And um, so, where does that come from? I mean, ha have you always been that way? I haven't. Uh, you, I, in the past, I've been very reserved. Uh, it, a lot of it came from having gone to UNLV and uh, having had a lot of great experiences there. They really pushed me as a student. And, and it, it, you know, in Las Vegas is very forward thinking and very aggressive too. And it, having been there and seeing what they're able to do and saying, that can happen in Utah, you know. There's no reason that we can't have that kind of energy. So uh, bringing that to Utah and, and hoping that we can make a better place of it. Okay. Well, you know, uh, lately we've had all kinds of different, um, what do you call it, um, accolades about Ogden and about historic 25th Street and everything going on. In fact, there's a new USA um, uh, poll that they're doing, right? Yeah. On um, the top 20, was is it the top 20 streets or yeah, was the top, cities? Top, no, it's the streets. Top 20 streets in the nation, yeah. and, and we're voting right now. So if you guys uh, go out to uh, any website or standardexaminer.net, any of these uh, sites, you're going to see uh, this this voting thing that you can go and vote for Historic 25th Street. Yeah, in fact, our Facebook has it on there. If you want to find us, we, we've got a link to it. 
We're excited. It's the energy we need. Okay, so tell everybody what the Facebook uh, page is. The link. So Paris Egyptian Theater has its own web page, uh, Facebook page, and you're, you know uh, we put on everything that's going on there. But we, because the, we succeed when the downtown succeeds. I share posts of ref, from the restaurants and from uh, from the government, Ogden City government. So anything Ogden really is is our is our mission on on the website page. So if you want to go there, you'll find information. I just today, as a matter of fact, and uh, I posted a picture about uh, some lady had just donated over a hundred autographed uh, pictures. I saw of those pictures. Nineteen thirty cel wow. celebrities. Yeah, she just she came up to me and she said I wanted this to go to the right place, and so she donated. 100 plus pictures and part of the, our uh, 20 year anniversary next year I'm going to have a, an exhibition of those and and uh, get you know make that possible for everybody to see I think they should be I think those things oh, should yeah. be seen oh yeah that is it and that's awesome so what is the page name what is yeah, is it uh, Perry's Egyptian uh, yeah, it's Facebook Perry's Egyptian Theater okay yeah. Perry's Egyptian Theater so make sure and that link will be listed in, uh, down below in the video, so check it out there. I'll have all the links uh, regarding. Oh, and and also you put out a. These guys put out a calendar, and it has like event after event after event after event, and uh, you know, uh, so you can get on their newsletter too. Yeah. And uh, they'd be happy to to send you an uh, an email, and they don't spam you. They just send out. How many? How often do you send out the? Once a week. Once a week. Yeah. So once a week. That's how often things are changing. That's how much is. That's how much is happening downtown Ogden, and you know. How would you say uh, the businesses, the community, and everybody work together for the betterment of Ogden? What's your experience? You know, honestly, I've I've worked in different cities. I you know I worked in Las Vegas. I worked in Layton. I worked in Salt Lake. Oh, and, and when you work in a, a city like I'm gonna I hate to turn the city Salt Lake down, but when you work in Salt Lake, it's all about your property, and and nobody cares about this the business next to it. But you know, Ogden has this energy that's I've not seen anywhere else. And it's it's when you do when you succeed, I succeed, and and it's a positive energy that I have not seen in any, any other place, and it's just amazing because because uh, we if we work together, where whoever we may be, um, then we know that we can we can get through and we can do amazing things, and we do. And and, and that's right. I mean, you can tell by you know all the recent uh, awards that we've been getting as a city, as uh, downtown Ogden, as historic Twenty Fifth Street. Um, and, you know, one of the things that's really cool with uh, Perry's Egyptian Theater is Sundance. So is this one of your biggest events of the year? It really is. Um, uh, so the Sundance was, came to Ogden right after the Egyptian Theater was built. And there's been times when they kind of looked at, at moving out of Ogden, but they love the theater. You know, we're the only theater that does the live uh, organ before the shows. And uh, we, there's several features that... That you can't get if you go to a Sundance Film Festival, a film in Park City or in Salt Lake. We're very unique, and uh, um, just recently, uh, last uh, uh, in the past, not even, it hasn't even been a year. We got a new projector, a new digital projector, and uh, it outweigh it. it uh, even out, it was even better than the, the than the projector that Sundance uses. So in years past, Sundance has provided us with a digital projector because they, ours was substandard. Well, now ours is better than theirs. It's better than theirs. And in fact, <laughs> we were joking with them because they wanted to bring theirs and move ours. And I said, no, wait until you see ours. And sure enough, yeah, they, they're, they were. They're happy to use it. Best best uh, projector in the state. All right. So uh, with all of the events that you have at, uh, at the Egyptian Theater, you know, what is your personal favorite? Well, that's hard to say. Um, you know, we have, we have live performances. We have dance competitions. We have... Uh, live theater, we have concerts, um, movies. You know, I've got to say because I am a, kind of a history nerd and I love I love movies, classic movies. We just showed Wizard of Oz uh, a few weeks ago, and I couldn't believe the attendance. First of all, it was on a Wednesday night, which you know parents are worried about getting their kids to bed on time, and nobody wants to go to do a movie on a Wednesday because it's it's a school or work night, and they've got to get up early the next morning. In fact, if you look at if you look at the Megaplex, they're selling $5 discount tickets to get people in seats. <laughs> but yet we have an 800-seat theater, and we have that place full. And in fact, we had people in costume. People were excited, and the, the picture and the sound was amazing. So for me, 
it's bringing those classic films back onto the big screen. I'll have to say. You know, and, and that that matches with the the vintage feel of the Egyptian theater, the vintage feel of downtown historic Twenty Fifth Street. You know, all those things kind of tying together. But you brought something back uh, that that kind of reminded me of. So, do you guys do the Rocky Horror Picture Show? We do, 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 Close to 1,600 prop bags for for oh, that wow. show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, and you know, I've seen pictures uh, posted on Facebook with that, and some of the costumes that those people come dressed in, they are they look so authentic. You'd think that you know it was a Hollywood production that, that these people were coming with their costumes. Yeah, you would. So, uh, so that's a that's a really fun event. And um, so, tell me, let's talk about the future now. What uh, what are you seeing uh, that that uh, you know that your that your hopes and dreams or you know um, I don't want to say business plan because because something that you're involved with like this and the business is part of it for sure but but you also have to have that really creative like vision you know so so tell us what your vision is as far as you know going forward and, and what you hope to see yeah so. Uh there's, uh, there's, uh, our vision is two things. So when I took this over, the Weber County Commissioners really said to me, the conference center is successful, but it's, it's, un, it's off of the radar. People in around, around Ogden do not know what's going on there. So could we, we want more community events in there. We want more, uh, we want more exposure for the people who are, that are supporting it through their taxes. So we've done a couple of things. We've brought things like Rotary into the conference center. And we do that. Uh, we we partner with with um, a few people on 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 events, which strictly just bring bodies into the theater and or the conference center. Um, we, ha we of course we still have to make a profit. We still have to be uh, we still have to be good stewards of the money and make sure that we're not making the taxpayer have to put more of a bill to keep the conference center going. But we want to be more ex we want to be more. Ex uh, accessible to the con to the public so we're okay. doing so when i talked about um musicals and things like that you know the there's been a lot of successes we uh bonneville high school recently did uh i want to say not cinderella it was uh mary poppins okay. and they did a fantastic job they did they had a they had a huge cast they even brought in some professional actors to sub you know to sub it a little bit and they did a fantastic. We want to do that. We want to bring and give students opportunities to be on stage and do productions. Um, we want to we want to do something that this, this the community will support and love. So you're going to see things where there's going to be more, uh, especially through the schools. If we don't get the school school students into our theater, then what we've done to bring this theater forward is going to die because they're not going to have the experiences and the memories. Uh, of the people who have before. So well, and, and, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. When I was a, a, a young boy going to the movies uh, at the Egyptian Theater, uh, it, was a, it was amazing. I remember everything about it. I remember the snack bar. I remember the bathrooms going down to the restroom yeah. and, you know, down into the basement. And, yeah, you know, that was a little scary uh, being a little kid. But, but um, you know, I have very fond memories of, of the uh, theater. Now, um, I want you to clarify for our viewers because uh, you were you were talking about the theater and then and then you were talking about the convention center. So tell me how these how they mesh or or how it mixes. What's uh, you know how does that work? Yeah. So it's the same management. Okay. We, where the conference center and the theater were, were the conference center was built around the theater. So for the theater, it was it was supposed to be like a general session for the rest of the conference center, but also to bring in entertainment and live events and so forth. So when they built the thing, they did it as one thing, and they called it the Ogden Eccles Conference Center. Okay. And we, we, we differentiate a little bit because shows in the theater are Perry's Egyptian Theater. That makes it easier for the public okay. to understand. But we are all one entity under the Ogden Eccles Conference Center. So uh, in January, we brought in one of the big, biggest bands around, um, and, uh, and the name is escaping me right now, the Crescent Superman from Salt Lake. And uh, we did that on the conference center side, but we sold tickets to the theater. But it's that kind of 
involvement that we're trying to communicate. Okay, so so the the they're just it's it's one it's under one umbrella basically, mm -hmm. and and uh, so you're doing uh, the dance competitions. Are you doing those in the conference center park? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah. So you have so this you're t you're teaching me something because as I try to envision this, uh, the conference center is huge, yeah. you know, and um, all of a sudden you've got. Uh, all this space that you can do some really cool stuff with, you know, yeah. and I and I can see the possibility. So if you're doing, you know, dance competitions and different things in both parts and having them going at the same time, I can see how that's going to really benefit Ogden, our community, uh, being able to um, attend some of these things. So let's talk business now. Okay, okay? absolutely. Um, if you're, you know, how are ticket prices? I mean, like, for example, give me uh, give me the ticket price for The Wizard of Oz that you had on Wednesday. Five bucks. Five bucks. Absolutely. Okay. And um, so when you have a bands like the one that you mentioned, uh, that was in January, what what's ticket prices for that? Give me some ideas. So the Crescent Super Band included two things. It included the, the show, which it was the musicians, plus it was a dinner. We had a full-on dance floor built and everything, so you were dancing and everything. Plus we did dinner, so it was... It was a steak and seafood. It was a surf and turf, and I think tickets went for thirty-five bucks. Okay, that's and, a good deal. Yeah, yeah, it was a great deal. Um, so we vary. We know that that our public typically won't buy a ticket for more than thirty, thirty-five bucks. So we keep it really keep cheap. I mean, inexpensive. And when you consider what you would pay for at Wendover or in Salt Lake, you can't get those kind of prices down there. So um, uh, excluding the Sundance Film Festival. Um, where are most of your patrons coming from? Are they are they coming from Ogden? Are they coming from Salt Lake, the surrounding areas? You know, where's the majority? Kind of give kind of, kind of give me a breakdown of uh, uh, percentages. Yeah, absolutely. So our biggest our biggest clientele, of course, is going to remain Ogden, and um, that that's across the board. Whether it's a dance show, a ballet, a movie. But here's the thing, and, and kudos to people like Doug Wright or KSL who will pop in at a classic film, and then he will, he'll, he'll uh, tout it on his radio show for five or ten minutes. We've had that happen not too long ago. Uh, Frank Late from the Utah Jazz Retired Coach, um, he, he's, he's actually a big attendee of our theaters. He, he comes to movies quite a bit, and he loves it. He comes up from Salt Lake. He uh, says he can't get an experience like that in Salt Lake. So, so we have people who come from as far away as um, recently we had Preston, uh, we have uh, Heber, but a few people in Salt Lake and Bountiful. But then we'll we'll have a surprise person from Mount, uh, Provo show up because they know that's quite the possession, uh, quite the uh, unique opportunity to uh, attend our theater. Sundance, you've mentioned, we actually have people who come in from Europe who want to attend Sundance only at our theater because they've, they've found it, experienced it, and they keep coming back. And it probably reminds them yeah. of something. Yeah. You know, and, and the cool thing about coming down um, to attend a show or an event at the conference center or the uh, Egyptian theater is catching the front runner. You know, if you're, even if you're coming as far south from you know, um, Provo and those areas, you can catch a train all the way up, and guess what? It drops you right off downtown yeah. at the Union Station, and it's a uh, you know uh, three blocks up. Yeah, three blocks up from the Union Station. Easy walk. You know, easy walk. Great in the summertime. You know, it's a great grab some dinner on on uh, historic Twenty Fifth Street. Head on up to the Egyptian Theater or catch it on the way back. Uh, so you get you know you have everything that you need or want right downtown, and it's all there. Plus, you get to see this beautiful theater. I mean, uh, you know, I wish, uh, I don't know, I'm sure on your website you have all kinds of beautiful pictures of the interior and so forth. So, is there any, um, uh, are there uh, any any scary aspects to this uh, Egyptian theater thing? <laughs> now, I've heard, I've heard tell, you know. The, the legends exist, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, our staff was not one to hide their stories and experiences. I haven't experienced anything, and I've been in the theater in pitch dark, but <laughs> I keep trying. So maybe someday. <laughs> well, you know, the, there's a lot of history uh, downtown, um, and and it's it's everywhere now. I mean, everybody's starting to learn so much more. Uh, but the thing is, uh, also, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some people are concerned with how downtown Ogden used to be, you know, and where we are today. 
And, uh, you know, as far as safety goes of people bringing kids down or just, you know, coming down for a date night or something like that, um, in your words, you know, how, how safe is downtown? Wow. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the fears and preconceived no, uh, notions come from decades ago. Um, I remember having lived, like I've mentioned, as a youth coming down to downtown Ogden. I remember uh, even Washington Boulevard was boarded up for, for the most part. And, uh, and uh, it, was, it was a long stretch from going from the Egyptian Theater to Ogden City Mall, and you didn't know if you were going to survive. Uh, I, used to, I used to go from the Ogden City Mall down to Sanders Coin, which was on 25th Street. I remember that place. I used to buy Michael Jordan baseball basketball cards there. I was a big fan. And I just remember thinking, Cam, I got to survive. That's kind of, that's a dangerous <laughs> walk. But nowadays, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you know, not only is it is it safe, but it seems like the downtown has just gotten smaller and easier to walk. There's not there's not a point A to point B. There's a lot of things to see in between, and it's very family friendly. And I agree with you. I mean, yeah, there's no you know, there's no. Uh, long stretches of empty vacant buildings or anything like that and it's well lit but you know uh, I think the thing that that I like about it most is at downtown Ogden is when you have a tight community like we have in downtown Ogden um, everybody's looking out for everybody else you know as, as Mike said at the at, earlier in the interview uh, you know that you know, uh, we all look for, look out for each other, and we you know we help each other out, and we really do do that. You know, so um, I feel, and we've been on Historic 25th Street for uh, going on six years in June. Wow! Yeah, six years in June, and um, I've never, you know, I I think it's one of the safest places. I mean, and we leave you know later in the evening, um, and and I've never felt uh, anything other than safe. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. it's been it's been a great experience for us. And, um, you know, to have somebody like you uh, working uh, with your team, and I'm sure you have a really good team, because in order to make things happen, you know, tell me a little bit, a l little bit about your team and, and how they support you and, and how you guys all work together, because I think that's important. Yeah, so I've been in hotels and conference centers before where, you have one department who, who does one thing and they do it all right, but they worry about their own department. Uh, I'm very fortunate because I've got an executive team and they've got a support staff underneath them that not only sees their department and makes sure and and takes pride in what they do, but then they they step and help in other departments. So uh, my director of sales, Ross Reeder, is phenomenal in that if concessions down in the theater needs help, you know he's jumping down there, he's popping popcorn, he's ringing up food. It doesn't matter if he's it's if it's uh, his job or not. Right. Um, Cassie Bybee, our director of sales. You know, she's got an eye for decoration and 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 making sure that the, the facility is beautiful, everything's in place. But then she also has a time, uh, an eye and, and an ear for timing. So the food comes out right, it comes out fresh, and she's on top of the kitchen to make sure that things are on time. So they all, uh, you know, it's one thing to say that that the conference center runs well and, and pat myself on the back for being the general manager, but it's not me. It's our amazing staff. And they take pride all the way down to uh, the into the housekeeper ears and everything else. Oh, yeah. In fact, I, if I may, um, when the conference center was re it was recently privately managed by a management company known as SMG, great management company. But the when the commissioners looked to take it in house and make it a Weaver County facility um, managed by the Weaver County. They, they saw the, the potential and the employees as being the reason that that conference center was successful. And it, even though SMG was definitely a, good, a key partner, uh, they knew that it would be in good hands as a management by Weaver County if the same employees were on board and able to take pride in what they do, and they do. Today. So, so the part of the plan was uh, as we transitioned from, from this uh, other entity to Weaver County and uh, bringing you on board was to keep this team because they were so good together. Yeah, you know, um, some people, when I came on, they said, for instance, well, I don't know, The sometimes the food is a little off kilter. Well, they don't know what the chef was up against according to the, the parameters that were given to him by the previous management. But since he's had kind of access to do it as he pleases mm -hmm. and not have those, those restrictions, People have uh, really fallen in love with the kitchen and their food that they prepared, and I have not had a complaint. Excellent. That's yeah. good. That's good. Well, um, so uh, if you, uh, I want you to give a parting shot 
uh, to our viewers. Yes. And you know, just kind of tell them, um, you know, uh, what they can expect when they when they um, find out more information when they come and experience, um, you know, the conference center and the theater, and you know, just kind of give them a shout out of, uh, you know, what to expect. Okay, I'd be glad to do that. You know, uh, I'm always admiring and I appreciate the feedback that I get from people as to uh, what we're doing and how they enjoy and never realized what great uh, great facility that we have and the gym that we have in downtown Ogden. However, I have to say that once you come and experience, whether it be a movie or a live performance or anything, um, or even a conference or something at, at, at our facility, you will return because... Uh, not only will you have a great experience, but you'll realize the quality and the magnitude of what we offer in our small community, which uh, you would think to only find in somewhere like Salt Lake or in a major town like Las Vegas or L.A. No, we have it right here in Ogden, and it's uh, one of the best, and people know that, and it's our opportunity, and I, and I invite you to come and experience that, and once you do, you will you will be signing up for the for the mailers and the calendars for more and more things to do and uh, experience the downtown Ogden because you've got the restaurants and the and other things going on and the energy is just fantastic. And the energy is very positive. It's a great vibe downtown Ogden. And um, one thing that I want to just touch on, and I can't, I can't even come close to what you just did for um, describing that, but one of the things that's, that's really good for us, especially for our friends down south in Salt Lake and so forth, is we have tons of parking and we don't charge for parking I don't believe nope right no. so we have we have free parking and yeah. unlike most other cities that's that you don't see that very often and so so our friends especially down in Salt Lake and other surrounding areas uh, if you've never had free parking before come to Ogden because we got tons of it okay Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, <experience. laughs> anyway Mike it's a pleasure to have you on the show thanks and, for inviting uh, me uh, yeah, yeah you know we're gonna we'll, we will invite you back because I want to find out more about that 20 year anniversary I've got some things in the works that I'm excited to announce but I can't at this time okay and and that's understandable but keep it keep in tune to uh, 25 drive live because uh, he's going to have some cool stuff to share with us, and uh, you know, let's make a let's let's make this a big thing because I I think it's important. Twenty years uh, is pretty amazing, um, and uh, again, we want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, I will have all the links down below, and uh, don't forget to check them out. And and uh, if you have any questions, uh, they're more than happy to answer them for you. So all that information will be in the links below, and reach out to them and find out what's going on, and and uh, like their Facebook page because. Uh, they have they're posting stuff all the time. So anyway, thank you for joining uh, 25 Drive Live, and we will see you again next week. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thanks, Alice. Thank you. <laughs>